This episode is sponsored by the Walt Disney Corporation. We did it, guys. We sold out. This episode is also sponsored by the post-Thanksgiving dinner nap, the best nap of the year. This is Sorry for the Wait. Here we go. up ready to go welcome to the show folks this is sorry for the wait a weight loss podcast for regular people by regular people i am your host seth and i am your host cranberry (laughs) get it get it cranberry because it's a thanksgiving episode seth do you get it i i get it oh you you nailed it glad you got it i i got it happy day before thanksgiving folks uh a very a very sorry thanksgiving a very (laughs) I love I love the title of that. A very it is sorry. Yeah, it is it is very sorry. But this is our first our first Thanksgiving as a podcast. Yeah, I mean it is podcast first Thanksgiving, and we are super excited. You know, hey, I I do have something. Yeah, uh, just really quick. It's from one of our listeners, uh, from Rhonda, and thank you, Rhonda, for for giving me this take so that we can talk about it. But we talked last episode. We had a hey big guys mm-hmm. from cousin Pete. So, oh yeah. So shout out to you again, Pete. But it was all about how if you had lost your sense of taste or smell, right? What would you do? Would you become ultra utilitarian? And and she sent me this take of, she doesn't believe that most people would eat better. Yeah. She said that most people that when they lose their their sense of taste, like just focusing on taste, when they lose their sense of taste, they're almost like chasing the dragon. You know what Ooh, I mean? Ooh, like if I have this like chocolate well, layer cake, yeah, am it, I gonna it, taste it's a little bit of chocolate? Right. It's more of like it's I guess it's especially like prevalent with like salty and spicy foods. Like uh, so you're just uh, like dumping makes sense. so like terrible for your cholesterol. Like you're just com- gonna be completely screwed putting half a salt shaker on your eggies. Chasing that dragon of of eating the most unhealthy food so you could just taste a little portion right like like, it, like it, what if like, I, I hate but i hate it but i think i would relate to that the one like what's gonna be the one food or the one kind of it that like maybe brings it back it's, it's almost, brussels sprouts yeah like remember like that classic tv trope of like someone gets amnesia and then all of a sudden something happens they and get hit on the head and I, suddenly they remember who they are like a, a weird hit on the head or like they think of something completely obscure and that's what like gets their memory back in the tv show and then you learn like that's not how that works and amnesia is also like very 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 rare yeah extremely rare but so is losing your complete sense of taste i guess but i don't know it's it's a it's still the debate's out jury's out on whether or not we would become better eaters <laughs> honestly i think i think ron I, I think ron is right yeah i i do think ron is more correct because honestly if you're given a gift like that or just a curse like that odds are nothing positives gonna come from it but speaking of positivity let's try and get a little more positive how was your week well i'll give you a little positivity i'll give you a little negativity thrown in there it was a very stressful week yeah i bet (laughs) um very stressful week but it was a successful week and it was successful because it was stressful and let me explain why Ooh, i love it so we've talked a number of times on the pod before about the way that we handle stressful situations right right right, eating Um, and very often it comes down to, you know, it's part of our binge eating disorder that we kind of acknowledge that we've had. Yeah. And this week, more than any other week, I was very triggered. Right. And, and I could see it and it was, it was kind of weird for me because as self-aware as I feel like I've been on the podcast, it was the first time where I'm like sitting in my car after a day of work where I'm just like. I want to eat a lot. Like you need to stop at get pizza. Right. Get, you you want to stop at like, four different just, places and yeah, get all your favorite things from all four of those most places. Everything that I could eat, I wanted to eat. But I was able to like stop and be like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And then come home and make myself like a small little wrap and and just get through the night. Right. And you were able to do that. Yeah. And and so that's why, you know, very stressful week, but like it does feel good having having come out the other side of it. Because there was there was a part of me that was like I'm this no close. No one's going to have to know. Right. You could do it once. I think the ability to to acknowledge that stuff in real time and sort of just be like, okay, whoa, like, holy shit, like, we need to take a beat. And then and then once you eat, you're like, all right, that that's over with. <laughs> but and, and I think it also gave me this, this newfound sense of confidence that, like, if this week didn't break me, 
What will? I'm good. <laughs> it can't get any worse, right? In the year of Don't, somebody's Seth, Lord, you 2020. <laughs> you can't. You can't say that. That's tempting fate. We can't. don't. We don't approve of that here. Yeah. You know what? Bring it. No. <laughs> then all of a sudden, like massive sinkholes just start opening up. <laughs> so regardless, well, we that, did have an earthquake like last week. Yeah. So. We, I know everything's ending, but that hey, in the midst of everything ending, that is a huge. That's a huge step. Like that's a huge like positive positive force that really can like catapult you for weeks to come thank you so how was your week it was a really weird week for me i'm back to working from home so that's huge Congratulations. love that thank you kindly it's about damn time like i never should have stopped working from home but that's neither here nor there i'm just so happy to like finally i loved the work from home like most people were like you know what like i'm not really thriving in my work from home routine your boy is thriving. The ability to go to the gym again early, like in either and not have to like rush through, not have to rush through the amount of money I'm saving on gas, not having to commute to Rhode Island. Everything is great. Like I have absolutely loved this. Now here's the kicker, though. I am worried about everything closing again, <laughs> and it's just so shitty. Rhode Island just announced that they're going to have a two week pause right after Thanksgiving. We're just like gyms. <laughs> see ya nope and whenever this is how it works for folks who aren't like in the new england area like it really kind of ends up like whatever rhode island does mass is usually like not that far behind and vice versa like whatever right. mass announces rhode island's like yeah no we'll come along man and that's kind of how it goes so i am just very very worried that when this pause starts right after thanksgiving for rhode island it's going to start for mass too and like gyms are just going to be completely closed so what's your backup plan i'm not too sure yet and i definitely do need to like figure out what my next steps are going to be if the gyms do all completely close up because it's not like the summertime you know what i mean like, right like not that i was huge into like walking outside or, or doing much of that outside like you were more doing that yeah but now that the weather's starting to get colder it's starting it's to be shitty not so nice that ocean breeze really sucks eggs coming off you know i i'm a little worried for sure but i am happy that like i'm at home like i'm in my element i don't have to worry about like outside forces kind of really messing up my flow i can just have my food here in the apartment do my thing and it's funny because i mean we took this whole journey while we were quarantined right so it kind of like I, I think it is kind of, you said it right, that like most people had this kind of like quarantine was terrible kind of aspect of it. And we were just like, we were like, we're built for our, this. We were being <laughs> our best selves. Yeah. And, and it's different this time around too, because like I'm eating real food again. So like mm -hmm. the shakes aren't too much of a play, but I still have a shit ton of shakes left. So that's nice to fall back on. And so I'm very happy with the current situation that is here in the sense of maybe you should drink those shakes before they go bad. Yeah, they don't go bad until like 2022. So, OK, so you got some time. We're good, but I'm I'm very happy working from home. I am a little nervous for the things coming up. But you know what? I mean, it's part of the wave. And who isn't nervous about what's coming right. up? Right? I was going to say, I feel like everyone's just in this perpetual state of nervousness. But you know what really calms the nerves, though? It's the craving of the week. Yeah. I think that might have been the smoothest segue we've had. I think so. <laughs> we didn't have to work very hard for that. And one. it's ruined now because I've acknowledged it, but I was glad that it was there. It is back, folks, because it never really went anywhere. It's another craving of the week. Really, really excited. Who? What are you? Let's. Flip, I, let's I keep going, so you you lay it on first. Okay, I was gonna say let's flip a coin, and then we don't flip a coin, and then it landed on me. But that just wastes air time. The coin landed on you. It landed on me. It's our own special commemorative. Sorry for the weight coin with both of our faces, one on each side. My craving of the week this week, right? I want to start a new reality show. Ooh. So like, okay. And this is something that like I've been thinking of. Of like, you know what? The Kardashians do it. Why not us? Why not us? And so welcome to MTV's Crepes. Uh, <laughs> so so i <laughs> cribs used to be one of my favorite shows of Crips. all time so i like it i loved mtv's cribs right like i always loved like just just the the from the opening of the door of like what's up welcome to my crib and you're like man that's a really interesting fish tank you have in there obscure rapper like <laughs> there were so many different things but for me mtv's crepes i'm gonna be showing off my crepe house the house nice. of crepes and you, crepes berry People Love don't. Crepes. People, Crepe, people sleep on crepes. People do not give crepes enough credit, in my opinion. Crepes, it is the the. It's a better alternative for if you're not trying to load up on pancakes. You know what I mean? It is the lighter version of a pancake. My crepes all need to kind of be chocolate based, but it is the chocolate chip crepe, right? Like chocolate chip crepes, like like Nutella crepes. Hell yeah, dude! Mm. Like I'm all for I'm that. With it. I'm f all for chocolate and peanut butter crepes, but. 
for someone who doesn't really like to have like fruit mixed in with my pastry or like fluffy carb, crepes are one of the ones where I am I am down with fruit in my crepes. Okay. You know what I mean? So like, like a little fruity crepe every now and then. Right. And like I'm just trying to have crepe everything. Like I'm trying to have a crepe canvas that I can have a projector screen project onto. You know what I mean? Because then once we're finished watching a movie, you can just eat the screen. Right. Exactly. And then it will just retract and roll down. I'm trying to have like, I'm trying to have instead of a bed, it's a hammock, like a hammock crepe. Okay. Like I'm all cool with that. Like just any way that you can incorporate crepes into MTV's crepes, this show's going to have super ratings. Absolutely. I mean, how how old can that get? Like season 24, right. episode 36. <laughs> like, oh, here's another house with crepes on it. And the host is just like, I don't. I really don't know. I didn't know that there was this many things you could do with crepes. All I see is crepes, just nightmares of crepes. You thought there'd have to be a season two pivot, but uh, they really committed. I know what you're all thinking. I should go to HR and talk about my mental health. There's no HR. It's the gingerbread man. <laughs> but MTV's crepes, outside of the mental health effects, I do think that I would have a lovely time in my house of crepes. I think so too. And crepes are a very like peaceful breakfast food. It's very classy. It is. Like if someone orders crepes at the table, I'm like, you are quite a distinguished person, aren't you now? I, I think that Honestly, I can't remember the last time I've had crepes. I'm trying to think now. Not many places really offer crepes. I Why know. don't more places offer crepes? Yeah, bring back crepes. Yeah. Hey, if anyone has a good place in the New England area that serves delicate crepes, let us know. Yeah. Let us know. We could Google it, but that wouldn't be any fun. Yeah, but it's much more fun. There's to more call... social media engagement than yeah. having you guys tell <laughs> it's us. It's more fun to call on your audience of thousands of people to... who mostly don't live in the area. You're right. asking for suggestions, <laughs> and so that so thank you. We're putting out the the fat signal for that, and we really appreciate it. But what are you craving this week? I'll start off with I'm craving Rice Krispie treats. Okay, so that's your foundation. That's my foundation, okay. and I remember getting clowned a little bit when I was talking about Rice Krispie treats. I think just oh, a while ago. I think just that was my the, go. That yeah. was my first my go three at a gas station. It was. And I was like, I like a rice krispie treat, and people were like, Oh, you need help. Yeah, and also you hate children and puppies. <laughs> I don't know. They said it. They I, said I don't it, know. Not me. I think I think children and puppies all like rice krispie, rice krispie treats. treats. <laughs> okay, so that's your foundation. All right. So are you ready for this? The seven layer rice krispie treat. Ooh, like a homemade seven, seven layer dip, but rice rice krispie treat. Basically, okay. so so two layers of the are the treat, right? So top and bottom is the Rice Krispie treat in the pan. Everything okay. else is going to be the the five middle layers. I love it. We're going to start off, we'll have, uh, so the Rice Krispie treat, some caramel. Ooh, okay. Oreo cookies. Yeah, hell yeah. Some peanut butter. Yeah. I figured I'd get you on yeah, that Yeah, you one. would get me on that for sure. Some chocolate chip cookies. Yep. And some chocolate brownie batter. Ooh. Followed I, by the final layer of crispy treat. Yeah, I do. You know what? Ooh, man. Do people make those? Do people make specialty rice crispy treats with I shit mean, in the middle? Why the fuck not? Why? You can make a rice crispy treat right now. You need a pan and you need like, I don't know. Rice Krispies? Rice Krispies? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's really all and you need. And marshmallow sauce. And but like, fluff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and I think that's it. So so I, we can get all of that stuff. We could do it right here, right now. We really could. Or somebody could make them for us and apparently send them to us because so many people have our address. <laughs> Nobody, this is going <laughs> no to be. No one's confessed. No, this is going to be the thing that haunts us for years, I think, because still, I have asked. I mean, every, those were really good cookies. I've asked everybody who has our address. Still nobody. And people are adamant. They're like, no, I ha I did not do that. And so somebody's lying. And I, you know what? I think it's going to be one of those things that like we're going to be like passing on into another life. And then whoever did it's just going to be like, yeah, that was me. And then we're just going to drift away. <laughs> like 50 years, 70 years yeah. from now, you're just like, oh, by the way, those gold belly cookies, that was me. Yeah, that was me. And then and then we just fade into oblivion. But I do really like the idea of a multi-layered Rice Krispie treat because one of my things with Rice Krispie treats is that when they do the specialty ones, I like them, but I just don't feel like there's enough of the addition. Oh, absolutely. They you do know? need to like heighten it up a little bit. I will say they do now make non non Rice Krispie cereal treats that like they have like Fruit Loop treats. Oh which yeah, is, like, yeah, the yeah. same like, idea, but they're like those Loops weird cereal and, like, bars. Yeah, and they're like, and the middle thing is supposed to be kind of like the milk, but we're not going to tell you what it is. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> shit freaks me out. I don't like that. Yeah, not really a fan of those. That's not what I'm looking for. I like the Rice Krispie part. We just need more. Right, I, I agree with that. So that's another craving of the week, folks. And as always, send us your cravings. Send us your dreams. 
sftwsubmissions at gmail.com. Nailed it. You know what? We really, really appreciate that. But we're going to move on because you know what? It's a Thanksgiving episode, baby. Why not have an, a Thanksgiving My Go 3? My Go 3 for Thanksgiving. Th- this I think that we might step on each other's toes a bit here. I do. I think so, too. I think it's only like it's just a matter of time before we're really going to match up. And then it will just come down to a popularity contest. And then one of us is going to feel really shitty. It's probably me. <laughs> you know what? I don't it's have funny because I think engagement. it was kind of I thought it was going to be me. <laughs> but you know what? I guess we'll, we'll, see. we'll find out the hard way. But. We're back with another My Go 3, a very just a a special edition Thanksgiving My Go 3. We're going with our top three things, like the the first three things that are getting on your plate. First three. For Thanksgiving. And so I'm... Let's flip our coin. Oh, man, it's you because (laughs) I did Craving of the Week first. (laughs) Hit me. What are your three? All right. I did really try to go out of my way to avoid turkey because, like, it's just we're both going to pick turkey. Like, it's not really, like, that funny to say turkey. because Oh, well, shit. Yeah, so that's going to fuck me up. But I picked turkey. (laughs) Yeah, same. Okay. (laughs) Okay, but, okay, let's talk about this together then. I, what do you, what kind, did you just go with, okay, so you just went with white, white meat, turkey. For me, I'm... And gravy, of course. Yeah, I'm not a big turkey person on Thanksgiving by nature. Okay. okay? So, like, naturally, I so wasn't... So then you shouldn't have put it on your go three so you wouldn't step on my toes. But here's the thing, though, is that my life was changed when I went from having, like, the traditional oven turkey to having deep-fried turkey. Ooh. Now, having deep-fried turkey at your Thanksgiving is a is a gift from the gods. The ju- I've never had deep-fried turkey. There's just something that really hits with it where like it's got a really juicy aspect. Like there you're not going to have a dry deep-fried turkey. Oh, okay. I'm I'm I might be portraying my ignorance here, but um is it kind of like KFC kind of fire? No, not really. Turkey? No, it's literally just like dropped in. It's not like battered and okay. like, yeah, so you're not having like a KFC bird. Okay. Dirty. I was going to say, if that's what you're having, like, I can see, I can see it being really good. But, but but for me, deep fried turkey, that it really does hit. But there is something to be said for just that traditional bird. What, like, I'm not joking. There are some turkeys out there that it alarms me at how large they are. Oh, the, the really big ones. Does this ever scare you like it scares me? Like, there are some like 30, 35 pound chonkers out there of turkeys. And I'm just like, that's a big bird. I see. Turkeys don't bother me like that because I've never seen an actual like live turkey. Like, I don't think ever. Really? But like, definitely not outside of like maybe at like a zoo. That's that doesn't whoa. sound about right. <laughs> that sounds totally wrong. I don't think I've ever seen one at a zoo either. I just I don't know. But <laughs> excuse me, zoo attendant, can you point me to the turkeys? And they're like, "What are you? What? It's a we have tigers I don't go to here. the zoo often, yeah. but I just. <laughs> I figured I'd throw that out so I didn't see like That's a complete very good. loser. But no, no, I don't think I've ever seen a turkey. I've seen tons of turkeys out in the wild, but like never ones that it's I looked at. It's geese that freak me out. Yeah. Geese are the ones that like, yeah, you're we don't need any geese here. Yeah, we don't need geese. And I see them all the fucking time. I'm telling you, man, like there are some turkeys that I look at. I'm like, That's a big turkey. But then I look at some and there's like a 30 pound turkeys that you can buy in store. And I'm like, that's a big ass turkey, man. You know, if you're one of those like family that have like, I don't know, the, the Duggars where they had like 83 kids. Yeah. Like, you kind of need Ooh, a big turkey, God right? Scares the shit out of me. Okay. So we're both on the board with, with a version of turkey. Okay. So I went, my number two is stuffing. I'm a big stuffing guy, even not on Thanksgiving. Super I funny. Like we're, uh, no. Yeah. No, of uh, course we are, man. We're two for two. This is really just an ode <laughs> to our favorite shit. Now, okay. This is a good one though, because I like the flow that we have going of going back and forth. Now, you're just going traditional stuffing. Stuffing with with some of the turkey gravy, too. Okay, stuffing with the turkey gravy. So for me, my favorite, like, this is literally my favorite thing of all Thanksgiving. Okay. It is a a Thanksgiving stuffing with crumbled sausage in it. Ooh. So sausage stuffing, man, I'll tell you. Now, I'm very particular with my stuffing. It needs to be cooked in a pan. It cannot be stuffed in the bird. Oh, no. You're not a, you're I not do, a bird stuffed I do tur- not stuffing? like stuffing in the bird. I feel like you're just you're just trying to make a scene. But if it's not in the bird, then what is it stuffed to make stuffing? Exactly. What do you call it? Look, like you can have... Okay, so like if you pulled, stu- if you pulled the stuffing out of a pillow, that's still stuffing, right? It's just not in the pillow. Okay. Right? I, yeah, yes. blown my mind a little bit. You yeah. cut, you cut oh, yeah. open a pillow and you pull out the stuff. That's the stuffing of the pillow. It's just not in the pillow. Okay. It's still stuffing. All right, I'll give you this one. And so for me, I can't have it in the bird because I'm just not trying to do that shit. Like people are like, but the inside of the bird drips on it. It makes it better. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. I'm sorry. I mean, it kind of like flavor. For me, yeah, it does. For me, it doesn't, man. I just, every stuffing that I've had inside of a bird has never tasted as good as when it's just made in a pan and it's crispy. It's got a little bit of a crunch to it. 
I love that with the with the hunks of sausage. I don't know. I think it might be a mental thing for you. I think if you were to do a blind taste test of stuffing that wasn't turkey and stuffing that wasn't in turkey, you might find yourself enjoying the turkey stuff. I don't know. I, well, may, that's a video then. But here's, can we agree on this? Yeah. No fruit belongs in stuffing. No. What psychos put fruit in stuffing? I know people, man. I know people who put like cranberries. Well, I hope they don't listen they, to this they put podcast like, <laughs> after I call them psychos, but. <laughs> they put like cranberries and like other like weird little dried fruits into hey, my their stuffing. cranberry today. Yeah, it is cranberry, but like I've seen that and I won't touch it. Yeah, I won't do it. Miss me with that. And I know like I'm not trying to yuck anybody's yum. If that's like your favorite thing about the holiday, I'm very sorry. But also just like don't bring that. Don't bring that to me. <laughs> don't don't do it all right so we both hit on the turkey we both hit on the stuffing i don't think you're gonna pick the same third thing as me no, because no you would chance. have known that i was gonna pick this anyway like, okay I, I think if you were to take a guess right now what do you think my third it's gonna be? for sure pumpkin pie it is five sure pumpkin yeah. pie it is absolutely pumpkin pie so you're right. uh, like i didn't i didn't go with pumpkin pie because dessert is such a big thanksgiving thing that like i never jumped to the pumpkin pie first okay okay so, i was i was playing around with a couple of other ones too so so like is when when the desserts come out is pumpkin pie like the first thing that you go for on the dessert rack like on it's the always the spread? first but it's never the only okay okay because <laughs> see that's my thing right like i always like to finish my dessert course with the pumpkin pie like i go after a lot of the other shit first and then i'm like you know what let's just pay homage to this great day let's just go have some pumpkin pie i'm a big like I'm a big massive amounts of whipped cream on my pumpkin pie. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like there it needs to be overkill. See, for me, my outlook on Thanksgiving dessert is that by the time I get to dessert, I've saved a little bit of room for dessert. Right. But I also know that I am always just about five seconds notice away from being Right, from like, being completely just, stuffed. Just could be like so close to popping. Right. So I know I gotta hit the the pumpkin pie or else I might just not I might not eat any pumpkin pie. Now let me hit you. And with then after that, I just keep eating pies right. until I run out of steam. Pie and till go, you pie till you die, baby. Exactly. <laughs> I go drop on the sofa and fall asleep, and I'll wake up on Friday. So let me hit you with this though. Uh, there was one Thanksgiving right where one of my family members bought pumpkin cheesecake squares. Ooh. And I was like, ooh, doggy. I am down you've like got, a clown, Charlie you, you've Brown. You've got you've got your boy right in the palm of your hands. Like that is my shit. And I am very see, for me, pumpkin, there is just something about like hints of pumpkin that like I almost I love hint of pumpkin added to almost everything. But, but you're not like pumpkin is like the main flavor. Exactly. Like it's not it's just not my it's not my complete wave. Like I still like it, but when you add a hint of pumpkin to things, that really changes the game for me. So, okay, so that's pretty much your three. My last thing, though, for me, this might, I'm not sure how popular this is amongst most. Okay. But mine is potato casserole. Now, mm. potato casserole, right? Mm. It sounds. kind of got me. It sounds weird mm. to you. Well, like, like potato casserole, at least in my family, like okay. this is just what it looks like. It is like melted cheese. Like, it's like almost like melted cheese sauce, butter, like diced up potatoes, and then almost like just this. It almost kind of seems like a rich cracker crust on top. Okay. And it is just like, it is very diesel heavy cheesy potatoes. Like you're, All right, I'm down with that. You're giving me like a classy. Cheesy potatoes when you put it that way. Exactly. Okay. It's a classy form of cheese fries. Like <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's cheese fries that are allowed to sit at the table or cheese fries who grew up and like think they're better. You ever think everybody. about how weird it is that like. Cheese fries is like acceptable in one form, but it's not acceptable in another form. Like if you were to go to a fancy dinner party and right. you were to bring like cheese fries, they'd laugh you out of there. Right. But if you were to come with your potato casserole, they'd be like, "Ooh, yeah!" Nice. People are like, "This is fantastic!" And like one of one of my aunts uh, in in our family, she makes the best potato casserole that I've ever had. And I'm like, man, like this shit is cheesy potatoes. Like it is essentially two shades from cheese fries. I could bring this anywhere and someone would think that I'm world renowned. Honestly, you should you should get that recipe now that you're a cooking boy. Yeah, now now that now that we are a, a household that cooks. But this is like a little bit of a rocky my go three. Thanksgiving, I think, really matches up. But I know that us, even though we overlapped, there's gonna be some weird shit out there. Since since we saved a lot of time on agreeing about most of the same stuff, can I give you a quick question about other desserts yeah go for it so where do you stand on i mean apple pie is pretty self-explanatory that's a yes yeah right? that's a big yes for me where do you stand on pecan pie 
Pecan pie. Pecan or pecan. pecan I'm or... a pecan person, not a pecan person, because pecan makes it sound like you're peeing in a can. Okay, so the, you're gonna you're gonna get a bonus like pre before camp story. Like, okay, this is like a night before I went to camp nice. story. Give us the give us the story. <laughs> I mean, oh my Even god. Even though the night before camp was never Thanksgiving, I so can't... it's a little off. No, but like it has to do with pecans, pecan pie. and that's why. Okay, pecan. so <laughs> I'm in New Rochelle, New York, right, and. My parents were dropping me off at camp the next day, and we went to go visit family, and we stayed overnight, and then we were going to drive to the Poconos the next day, right? This is my first summer at the camp that we met at. Ooh. Okay, so this is 2009. <laughs> okay, so we're at New Rochelle, and we go out to this restaurant, this Chinese food place, right? And we just eat. I, I never ate more food than I, than I did on this night. So much Chinese nice. food, just courses coming left and right. How I mean, many plates? Uh, well, it wasn't even like buffet style. It uh. was just like appetizers and shit because it was a really nice place. Oh, like, okay. It was a very upscale place. Like I had Peking duck for the first time, and I was like, whoa, this is pretty wild. I actually don't I've hate I've never this. had that. I eat so much food, and I am so full. But then one of my family members, like as we were walking out, was like, well, you got to finish with some dessert. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, you know ah, what? Twist my arm. And like, I'm in this mind of like, I'm going to camp tomorrow. Like, I got to go nuts. Like, it's got to be so. Of course, the last supper. So one of my family members, she takes me to the hotel lobby, uh, like the Marriott Hotel lobby. And there is a haagen butter pecan ice cream. Oh, like, boy. Pint. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, hell yeah. I'll get that. Because it was one of the only flavors. I downed that entire pint, like sitting in my hotel room. And I am like, I am so full. But I'm like, you know what? We're just going to go to bed. Fast forward, it's 2 a.m., the fire alarm starts going off. I wake up, like, in this, like, weird kind of anxiety-ridden, like, I've just been woken up suddenly. Right. And we have to evacuate the building. The oh, building, no. there was an actual fire. Oh, And wow. I'm like, oh, shit. And my stomach is just, like, killing me. <laughs> and I... Leave me. And my mother is like, we gotta go now. And I'm like, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> And I got so sick, I didn't evacuate the room. I literally just yeah. Had this is this is my life now. Just go, yeah. save so, yourself. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm getting so sick and so sick. And my mom's just standing there with me, so disappointed. And then finally, we walk down the stairs and like get out of the building. And I'm just like, look at my mom. My mom is so upset with me. <laughs> and then like I sleep it off the next morning. And then I go to camp. But like it was just the most. She was ready to leave you there for a whole summer. That <laughs> yeah, day. yeah, exactly. She had no problem dropping me off with my dad that next day. And every Ever since then, I cannot touch anything pecan related. Oh, really? Like and it's just a mental thing for you? That's where point? it comes full circle. I, that's, that's absurd you say that, though, because butter pecan is my favorite. Like Dunkin' Donuts has this Baskin Robbins flavor that comes out seasonally every right. now and then. And that's my favorite, my favorite like coffee flavor from Dunkin' of all seasons, even beating out pumpkin. Is butter pecan. Is butter pecan. Yeah, like I just can't touch anything. Like anything that is butter pecan or pecan pie related, like... I can't do it. All right, more for me. Yeah, that's it. What's your What's your stance on cranberry sauce? Okay, I am very as cranberry. I am very pro cranberry sauce, but I also don't need cranberry sauce. Okay, see, for me, I I do like a little bit of cranberry sauce, but it's got to be from the ocean, like the ocean spray, like cranberry. <laughs> like it's got to be nothing else. It's got to be from that aluminum can. If you make homemade cranberry sauce, there is literally zero chance that I'm touching it. <laughs> it has to be can opened and plopped right into a dish because Ugh. yeah, like for me that's just how it goes. Okay, have you tried other ones or is it just like I think I've like, tried I'm not I've tried other ones but just somehow some way the ocean, ocean spray the ocean wins. spray cranberry sauce just always wins for me. But It's because they have the the feet of the people in the in the cranberries. That's true. I like that. And so that's another my go three folks please as you always do we'll put something up you'll tell us how we're wrong somehow even though if, if somebody argues against turkey yeah. and stuffing for <laughs> yeah, two thirds of them really hard. they're gonna be the ones who have a problem i really want to know though like what people's like weird like weird addition to their go three is like something they think that they're gonna have that not a lot of other households are really gonna and, have and like how you switch up like like the deep fried turkey like that was a pretty good it is a, uh, it's a good variation on a, on a thanksgiving classic and i'm just sitting here with like oh, i'll have white meat yeah i'll have turkey <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna move into our main topic which i mean just tis the season baby a it's a very, very sorry, sorry thanksgiving. thanksgiving and i really that was a great line yeah that right was a, that was a good yeah i'm sure that's gonna listen great in <laughs> post but it is a very sorry thanksgiving because as we record this right as we record this my Thanksgiving has been uh, has been canceled, and a lot of other people's Aww. Thanksgiving has been canceled. So it was still kind of like teetering on the line of like, are we going to have just a small group of people? 
are we going to do this? And just given the times right now, it's just not the most responsible thing for us to do. Right. And I've got, I've got people in my family that I really don't, I would feel awful if I went and they got sick and I was somehow a part of that transmission. Like it would just make me feel really, really bad. And so it's going to be a really weird, a very sorry, it's going to be a very sorry Thanksgiving of us here in fall river at our apartment, just chilling. And you guys know our address because you sent us the cookies. Yes, so. somebody does, some psychopath. So please don't send us other shit because we really need to keep on track. So so <laughs> with with the Thanksgiving being canceled, I mean, this is pretty last minute. Like, do you want to do something for Thanksgiving? I, I feel like we should probably get some turkey, some uh, well, stuffing, some pumpkin pies, well, some of your uh, I kind of think that potato maybe, casserole. I kind of think that maybe we should just do something completely different. Like, like is is I know Chinese food on Christmas is a big thing in your in your religion, right? Like in my yeah, you know the the third book of the Bible is actually uh, well, Leviticus twenty one thirteen. Thou shalt eat Chinese food on Christmas every. I every thought year. I read that. I thought I read that. It is. And and but no, I'm not wrong there, right? Like I wasn't just com- being completely stereotypical there, was I? I'll I'll let you sit with that and wonder. Oh, that's the worst. Don't, you're going to get me. No, you're that. fine. You're fine. But yeah, it's the, the Jewish guilt thing is part of the religion. Yeah, though. okay. <laughs> but so, I mean, we could do like a whole switch up like Chinese food on Thanksgiving, but like, I don't know if that really fits. We like, got to we gotta give it like a real, like a real pivot. We got to get something that we never have any other time. I do like that. But like, we do need to have pumpkin pie as part of it. Yeah. You know so what, what would mean? be the weirdest combination of a main course to go with pumpkin pie? I think it's, it's something Tex-Mex related. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, I was going to go Indian. Ooh, ooh, we could get curry and pumpkin pie. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And Or or we go Lebanese food and get shawarma. I, mm. would, I would love me some shawarma on Thanksgiving. But see, these are the things that I never thought that I would be thinking about. Just or, a week ago when you had your plans for Thanksgiving. Well, just even just Thanksgiving in general. Like, I know that right now, like, cases are rising, and it is the responsible thing to just kind of limit your gathering. And really, I know that that's tough for people, and I know not a lot of people – can really do that because right. like it's very hard to like say like hey I'm not going to come to Thanksgiving and so for well, anyone who is going to celebrate and be at a gathering just be as safe as possible yeah and I think especially like you know you kind of mentioned that it was more for the people around you and I think I, I kind of feel the same way where it's kind of like you know you want to spread the love but right. that's all you want to spread <laughs> right yeah so like you that's could the spread, last thing you want to you can spread the love like through zoom a little bit if you had to you know but <laughs> like yeah. that's that's at least the perspective i'm taking with my family on it i'm gonna be honest though this year i do feel a lot less anxious about like if i'm gonna nail thanksgiving like if i'm gonna pass the test like I mean, there is something like, to be said for- as sorry <laughs> as you have to feel for all of the people who don't get to see their family on thanksgiving like like you know myself yeah. i was planning on going to new york if if you know, COVID willing. Right. But at the same time, I think there are a lot of people out there who might be uh, excited that they don't have to put up with a family of, of po- awkward of, conversation. Of, of, hot, of hot political takes. But hey, did you vote Uncle Gary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the most terrible conversation to have. But for me, like, I was very nervous thinking about Thanksgiving on, like, the... It's a holiday that is so food-based and food-centric. Like, this is a food celebration. It is food and football and family like right that's what people call that's what all people talk about with thanksgiving and i was definitely very nervous about letting it get away from me a little bit yeah just letting it be a a a thing it's funny because i was thinking of that too that thanksgiving is usually such a big binge day for me right and i i haven't had you you know you've had the wedding where you kind of got to put yourself on a trial run i haven't even had that so i am i'm almost glad that i don't have a thanksgiving piece (laughs) coming up right now because it would have been a first big test for you yeah like like you at the wedding like i feel like i would have kind of been in my own head about it at at the beginning of it and i think we're just like with just kind of like what we said with halloween right like it is such a like a Halloween and Thanksgiving, like you're encouraged to like eat more than you should, like eat more candy or on Thanksgiving, just eat more food. And we normally did that anyway. That's the holidays. But everyone else around us is doing it. So you were like sick. Like, I don't even have to worry about anyone looking at me funny for having a massive plate. And now it's like, <laughs> I don't want to have as massive a plate as everyone else. <laughs> and I then just want to have like a turkey sandwich. And on the flip side, people would be like, come on, it's Thanksgiving. Add a little more. And I'm just like, please <laughs> don't talk to me. But I like, I do think that this holiday is all about trying to, there's a, there's a difference between staying so disciplined that in the end you end up feeling worse about it versus finding a balance and still being able to capture the essence of the holiday. 
Yeah, you, you, that's like, definitely true. Because like, I want people who are still on a weight loss journey and who are going to celebrate to still enjoy the day. It's a holiday. Like You want to enjoy it. Never do I want someone and never do I want myself to be so disciplined in going to an event that I leave and I'm just like, well, I feel like I didn't even enjoy the holiday right and I, it, that's kind of the thing you know thanksgiving forget about the turkey forget about the family forget about all the other stuff that we do on thanksgiving forget about the football thanksgiving is about like what are we thankful for right and you know i'm thankful that i'm in a place where you know i'm able to have a very stressful week and not go out and binge yeah but i would be very unthankful to be in a position where i am letting my own cravings destabilize myself yeah. and like kind of make me not enjoy that time with my family. Yeah, I do like that. What a, that's a really good thing to be thankful for. I'm thankful for peanut butter. Like okay. That's what that's yeah, what, no, I'm, I'm I, very thankful for peanut butter. And I'm thankful for peanut butter too because the more peanut butter there is out there, the less that you will eat my shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. I'm thankful I'm thankful for you. For Aww. sitting across from me on the ones and twos. I'm thankful for you too, buddy. Okay, good. I was going to say, say it back. <laughs> say it say it right back. But, <laughs> but but I do I do think that anyone... And I'm thankful for all of you out there who are still listening to us. Give yourselves a pat on the yeah, back. Yeah, hey, we really want you to right now, as you're listening to this... Just pat yourself pat on the Pat yourself back. on the back. I don't care where you are. I don't care how ridiculous you look with your with your AirPods in, just standing in line at Starbucks, just going. Ah, ah, ah. So it's like, just what, do it. What What are you doing there, my dude? Like Seth and Strawberry told me to, and they're like, "Who? We're the only two people in this room." <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're not patting yourself on the back as we speak, then you know. So I do think that there is some advice to be given to people who are going to celebrate this year, and I am. A, I agree. I'm a big proponent about pre-planning your Thanksgiving plate. I am. I yeah. like you kind of know like when you're with your family like you kind of know what the game plan is in terms of spread like you know what the things are going to be like like here's on here's on Cindy who makes this like here's like here's it's going to be political whatever choice of, of food that you get when <laughs> everybody brings like, like something there's always the person in the family who makes something that nobody really eats and then like someone tells you like hey you should put some of that on your plate so that they don't feel bad and you're like all right yeah fucking yes like it's going to be less square footage on my plate though i really don't jive with that but i'm a big proponent of pre-planning the plate out because then at least you have more of a solid game plan of like this is what i know i'm going to put on my plate I know how much I'm going to put of it. It doesn't need to be so severely strict that like you're like measuring out space on your plate, but at least having a rough idea, I think takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And I mean, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so it's a little short notice, but if you can plan to have a pet with you that you can scrape some of the food off to <laughs> so that when you need to get Aunt Cindy's, you know, it's, mashed potatoes that are super bland. It's my food support dog. Yeah. You just be like, oh, you know, Aunt Cindy, these, these oh beautiful love these potatoes that is, oh i just inhaled them what a whole new way for emotional support dogs but they're just for food like it why is, is that dog 800 pounds yeah <laughs> and i feel like it feel like it's awful to say but like you get a meal and immediately half goes to the food support dog like that <laughs> and then and then you're only consuming half the calories like your pup your your support dog is really just taking in a huge calorie intake. Like you got to be doing a lot of walking. I like that. It's almost like I forget what movie it is, but there's this movie where there's this guy who has like I I wouldn't call it a superpower, but basically like a portrait like ages for him and like takes all of his like beatings and stuff, so he looks like a young person oh, all the sick. time. Yeah, but his portrait looks like shit. And it's, so this is what and it's like is, for the dog. Yeah, like your <laughs> the dog is your portrait. Why is this this dog eats? 5,500 calories a day. I don't know how. And you're just in there. Like, yeah, I don't know either. You just. I only give him kibble like twice a gets day. Gets in the trash. What are you going to do? <laughs> but I also like another thing about the Thanksgiving being canceled. Like I'm just trying to look on the bright side of things, right? Like I don't have to worry about if I'm going to forget the one thing that I'm tasked with bringing. Which, oh, you were terrible right, at that which, shit. Which most, uh, which most dudes in their 20s are really just kind of given the task of like, hey, can you go get the snowflake bread rolls? And you very rarely successfully yeah, accomplish and that. I, you go, sorry, what could I do? Yeah. They were all closed Thanksgiving morning. Right. How else could I get them? And like my family has to be like, you had the simplest, <laughs> not just the one job, but the simplest one job. And I will say last year you brought me to your family Thanksgiving and you didn't bring the rolls. Yeah. No. And I was I I was like, man, I really hope they don't feel unwelcoming to me just because you dropped the ball here. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. And like, they didn't. Yeah, no, because somebody anticipated that I would forget <laughs> and, they and then they them. had them. And I was like, whoopee. <laughs> what a great thing. Two years ago, I was supposed to bring like desserts 
And I was last time they give you a task that yeah, important. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, damn. Like, I didn't get them. Like, I got how them. Could you, how could okay. you ruin dessert? So I didn't I didn't get Seth. them in advance. I did get them the day of okay. like because there was a place open that I did get them. But I remember rolling up to my parents house and being like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to go run to the store. And my mother, man, she looked right at me and I thought I was going to die that day. Like, I thought it was the day I was going to die, and I felt so bad. She probably had to talk to herself and be like, it's Thanksgiving. It's not the day to murder your child. And I remember. You got to just. I remember I still got the desserts. Swallow it down. I still got the desserts, and, like, everything was fine. But, like, of course, like, my mom was still mad, and I would be, too, if my dumbass kid forgot the one thing he was supposed to. I'll never forget my dad coming up to me later, and Dave goes, he's like, I'm going to be honest, Seth. Like, you just really kind of fucked that one up. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry, Dad. (laughs) You still love me though, right? <laughs> they probably what was probably going through their head was like, we're gonna task Seth with desserts because we know he can't drop the ball on this. He's right. Seth. Exactly. And then you still managed to <laughs> still do it. managed to completely wang that one. And you know what? Shout out to all the college uh, all the college freshmen who probably never even went to school, but this is like the number one drinking night of the year where like college kids like all go out like to their hometown bar because they're technically home from break and they all tell the same stories to each other. You know what I mean? Like it's like, oh man, like we remember had this- when we were in high school. Yeah, it's it's a mixture of like remember this about high school and also like let's all tell the same variation of a story about drinking in a dorm room just at a different campus location. Like that's kind of <laughs> what it is. And so for all the people who can't go out and do that just toast one to this podcast and uh, you know what? Just sit and relax. Have a good time. Yeah. Why not? But you know what? That's a very sorry Thanksgiving. We're going to finish it off, though, with a very special Thanksgiving breaded and butter. And I'm going in blind here. You are going in blind. I figured, you know what? We've we've had a lot of, you know, there's there's not a lot of very happy things to, to think about this Thanksgiving right. compared to our normal Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So instead of making this lemon into lemonade why don't we just ruin all the other things <laughs> let's just let's just dive deeper into the depths of hell <laughs> the the thread that i'm pulling from is called what is the trashiest thing someone has done at your family thanksgiving Ooh, okay Re- and let me tell you there are some trash lords out there give me it i need some so the first one i think this is just really funny grandma threatened to shit in the turkey if we didn't let her watch jeopardy <laughs> Hey, you know what? I get it. I, you know what, and and I, the reason I want to mention this is because rest in peace, Alex. Yeah, God rest his soul, man. That is a that is a wonderful, wonderful man that we lost. But <laughs> I think it's so funny. Can it is it. so true. Grandma in a recliner, being like, "If you turn Trebek off, I, I will sw- shit. Come hell or high water, it will I be am stuffed. Yeah, you want to talk about stuffing in the turkey? I'm going to shit. And what are you going to do to me? I'm your grandmother. <laughs> that is so. That's the level of old person that I cannot wait to reach, where I can say something like that, and someone's like, "You need to leave." Are you ready for another another? Um, yes. You know, old yes. person. Give me it. <laughs> My aunt decided to announce she got chlamydia as we started to eat. Yes. And my grandmother <laughs> told her getting stuffed by random people is for turkeys. <laughs> Whoever's grandmother that is, another, I love another you. Another ace's grandmother. God, could you imagine about to take your first bite and then whammo, somebody's personal life, all up in your biz. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> do you have any others? I think you'll relate to this one. Okay. She was responsible for bringing the dessert. She showed up three hours late, and instead of bringing dessert, she brought an open bag of frozen pierogies. It was a real downer. Oh, man, that is a bummer. Okay. That's okay. kind of like a Seth move This there. one, no, okay, I am insulted by that because, <laughs> let's be honest, if I'm three hours late, I'm not showing up. <laughs> like, okay, so I, w- yes, okay, like, if you're tasked with bringing the desserts and you wang that, okay, you don't show up late. Like, you literally, you leave town. Like Right, you, yeah. You, you change your name, and get a new you, social security number. And if you are going to show up, you don't show up with frozen pierogies, a half bag. Like, you don't show up with frozen pierogies. You say, like, oh, man, like, I would have gotten the desserts, but somebody got in a car accident, and I had to... you. Rip their door off. Like, you come up with anything. Right. Like, ah, uh, like, and, and then, I don't know, it was just ruined. Like, I, I in the right. rush to save this person's life, the cake just fell face down. Exactly. And- like, or, or yeah, no, there are so many excuses you can have. You don't show up three hours late with pierogies. Can I also say, because, okay, this next one was not really all that funny, but it was just about, like, they said that they would start eating at four. They arrived at 345. Everyone had already eaten all the food. Oh, uh, that's just- tough. 
but it just makes me want to deviate for a second. Okay. Why is it that people eat dinner so early on Thanksgiving? I don't know. We do the same thing too in our I, family. That's, I don't, a, that's such a, like a ubiquitous tradition. Oh, Everybody does it. Yeah. Why? Every, okay. So uh, here's my theory, right? Okay. Is that when you eat Thanksgiving, like I disregard all the historical shit, okay? Because I don't know anything about that. But I like to think that you eat around like one, two, like in that one to four range because you know how tired you're going to be afterwards. After you have that big Thanksgiving meal and you are super drowsy, you want at least a good one to two to maybe three hours of just chilling and being a lethargic tub of goo on the couch so that you can kind of muster up the strength to even drive home. See, I'm, I'm almost the opposite. And part of it is just because when growing up, Thanksgiving was like I very rarely had to go anywhere. Right. You were um, always at home. Yeah. So... Like Thanksgiving for me, it was like, okay, now I've eaten. I want to go take a nap, but all these people are still here that I got to talk to. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. That's a, yeah. For you, that's tough. Isn't it just like, <laughs> okay, guys, we just <laughs> ate. Thanksgiving's over. For you who hates talking to people by nature, like the, you we just want to eat now. and then just be like, everybody get on out. <laughs> <laughs> for me, yeah. No, we would always eat and then like you would kind of take like a little bit of a regroup nap. You know, you'd kind of unbutton the pants. You'd kind of move yourself around a little bit, try and loosen up the, loosen up everything that's inside you. You know, maybe like just hit the bathroom real quick and then dessert's coming out and then you get that sugar rushing. You ride that all the way into your drive home. Right. Like that's my that was always my big thing. But I wonder what would happen if we'd all just switch to eating late at night. There's yeah. a lot of football on, too. And you know what? Like have some hors d'oeuvres at the beginning of the, the day. You know, you guys can still come over early, yeah, but like let's sleep. not have dinner at two o'clock and then like not eat again. A good hors d'oeuvre spread can really make a Thanksgiving, man. I'm telling you some nice shrimpies. Shrimping ain't easy. You know, mm. you got to you gotta have some nice shrimp, some nice appetizers. Have you ever had shrimp on Thanksgiving? That, that doesn't sound right to me. Oh, but. shrimp cocktail? Absolutely. Like as really? an appetizer. Not like as part of the big spread, but just like right. as like a very like, oh, I can nosh on this before the big meal I was thinking out. like a cheese and cracker. Uh, yeah, a little. It's not smorgasbord. What am I? Charcuterie? What, 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 charcuterie. <laughs> that's it. Oh, we will have the smorgasbord platter, please. <laughs> the smorgasbord board is because it's normally a charcuterie board. And <laughs> so, yeah, the smorgasbord board. Yes, I that's like what it. it's now henceforth called. So I really I really like that. And honestly, oh, do you have, I have I have one last one. Oh, yes. Give me it. All right. So this one, last one. Okay. Mid-dinner, my great aunt starts talking about how she has the shits. Literal feces, diarrhea, the squirts, the oh, whole nine. Jesus. Really makes you want to finish eating her green bean casserole. Oh, my God. Like, what is it with crazy ants, man? Like, <laughs> Can we just say nobody should be talking about fecal matter at any at dinner, any At any, at any, any point of conversation that's really kind of not amongst, like, very close personal friends in an intimate setting and your doctor. Like, that, <laughs> like those are really kind of the, that's where it starts and ends. My but dear. definitely not Thanksgiving dinner time. Yeah, like, see, I wonder what makes people so brazen, like, when, th like when sitting down and having Thanksgiving dinner that they just feel like the filter can completely come off. I think it's just this idea that, like, ah, it's Thanksgiving, it's the family, it's not, like, what right. are they going to do? Change their DNA? Granted, They're kind of stuck. Yeah, some people, like, start drinking too at like 7 a.m on thanksgiving that probably has a lot to do with it too man what a just a day of debauchery like <laughs> truthfully it's really a day of debauchery it but, is but that's another breaded and butter a very special thanksgiving breaded and butter a very and sorry thanksgiving a very breaded and yeah, butter. very sorry breaded and butter we uh we apologize for a lot of the shit talk <laughs> but we are going to go into closing thoughts and you know what i know that it's such a different thanksgiving for everybody and and whether you are celebrating and if you are please just stay as safe as possible if you're stuck at home like us, let us know what you're doing. Give us some ideas because, honestly, we're an open book right now. We're probably just going to watch a bunch of TV and uh, and chill and just be thankful for having each other on the ones and twos. Yeah, and I, I definitely, you know, take some time, especially if you are missing out on your traditional Thanksgiving experience. Uh, take some time to, to reflect on what you are thankful about because, I mean— Lord knows we all need a little bit more positivity yeah. going through our minds. We definitely during need all of this. We, we all we all could use a pick me up. And we hope that at least us talking every week, spitting bullshit every now and again that you all somehow still listen to. Uh, we we are very, <laughs> very thankful for Did you just subtweet our entire. Yeah. Audience? <laughs> well, in a very positive way that like you keep coming back. We're still going to be here. So we really, really thank you for all of that. 
And that's another episode of Sorry for the Wait, folks. So if you want to submit to us, sftwsubmissions at gmail.com. And make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on every social media platform you can. And make sure after your Thanksgiving, tell us how your Thanksgiving went. Leave us a voicemail, 774-855-9433. And as always, give us a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. We really, really appreciate it. And just a little fun announcement. When I took some time off, I had the pleasure of going on the Cut Through the Noise podcast hosted by Dave Toronto. Ooh. Yeah, it was a very nice. it was a very big moment, you know. I had some time off. I was able to go up to the studio and uh, and sit with Dave Toronto, the host of the Cut Through the Noise podcast. It was really, really cool. It was fun to guest on a podcast. We hope to do it more. Absolutely. You know? So maybe you and I are going to be able to jump on a few. But Dave's first episode, it's a three-episode miniseries of, of him and I, and I'm very, very excited. The first episode is already out. So everywhere that you get your podcast, go go to Cut Through the Noise podcast. Go check that out. It's going to be a three episode mini series. The first episode is already out. The other two are coming out very very soon. Dave, thank you so much for having me, and we really really hope you like it. But you know what, folks? Until next time, I'm Seth and I'm Cranberry. <laughs> Remember, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer, but keep your snacks the closest. <laughs>